Hello, everybody, uh, ladies and gentlemen. First, um, I would like to uh, thank the Federation of European Publishers and Educational Publishers Forum with IPA who asked me to present our standpoint, uh, our role, our role of educational publishers in creating the digital future of education. I'm a publisher all my life. I published my first textbook 33 years ago in ancient history of printed textbooks only. So I am going to be more concrete with sharing my screen uh, with a short presentation that I want to do actually also in a few minutes. Um, so you will see I'm responsible for Eastern Europe and the Baltics. Um, CLET is the publisher in Germany, but the biggest German publisher, maybe even in Europe, but surely probably the biggest when we have offices in more than 10 European countries. This is actually my universe. The countries that are highlighted are where we are number one or number two educational publisher, basically uh, servicing um, prior, uh, um, public schools with digital textbooks and printed textbooks with revenues like 50 million and plus. Um, initially, the question at the start was one, how to actually come from the only printed world to the digital world, so how to achieve digital skills and how to make content that was printed available in digital learning uh, format. So we strongly believe that the, this is the interaction of four pillars. So the hardware, which is easily understood by governments and by, by, by uh, people that are taking care for a digital environment, but then platforms, school information systems, learning management systems, communication platforms. And then, of course, very important from our point of view, teacher training, and then at the end, digital learning content. So all together should work and in the uh, right order. So the question actually is not what, but how. So I actually use for this short few minutes presentation three cases plus three cases of countries where we have some different results, but first three good cases in cooperation with us publishers where countries and digital skills of teachers are rapidly growing. And this is based on a very good cooperation with the private public or let's say publishers governments or publishers ministry of education. So let's see what happened in Estonia. So um, this was actually a very good case when uh, publishers tried and they are still testing the Netflixing, so, so called Netflixing of digital textbooks. So all publishers joined together the forces and in the platform that was provided, developed privately actually are offering more than 300 titles. Ministry of Education is financing, financing as a test with 1.2 million yearly. This actually access that rapidly grew over the um, during the pandemic uh, uh, lockdowns, and uh, it's obviously very high at the moment as well. So this is actually a test, but still the two worlds coexist: the, the printed world of textbooks and the digital. Serbia, uh, with a totally different infrastructure, like you can imagine, in the, in, uh, without, with internet connection and hardware, actually took a very bold step in 2018 with a testing pilot project with 2,000 classrooms, 2,000 teachers that actually were self-motivated and started this process of getting everything together, all four pillars, not just hardware, not just training, not just content, but together simultaneously. And actually now with uh, two years of the very serious uh, impact of the project, we have 27,000 classrooms, 27,000 teachers with very modest investment in hardware because it's basically the projector, computer and so on. And uh, of course the high speed connection and the licenses for the content that are paid yearly to the publish seven publishers actually compete in this project. And the last very small one in Montenegro the ambitious minister actually wanted to, to digitalize the great one, uh, actually textbooks that are published by the state agency because there is no market there. And this was actually entrusted to us with CLET and National Geographic. We worked with National Geographic for years. We actually, it's a project budget is like 3 million euros. So 10% of it is for content and the rest is for the, um, for every first grader to get really top quality interactive digital materials alongside with the printed materials. So what happened? Publishers actually in all the cases, and we have the similar situation in Lithuania and some other cases, actually are uh, motivated to create top digital content. 
various types. So easy and simple e textbooks or advanced digital textbooks. So it depends on the ability, the skills that are existent and will be forced by the uh, concrete action. So they are competing in quality. That, that means that quality goes up. They produce, obtain and localize the high quality content from the third parties like National Geographic, Twig, BBC. So regularly update and optimize the content, which will not be the case later, I will explain, and promote the use of digital solutions and foster digital skills. But very important, free training that is focused on the teacher skills that they have, and then of course student skills. Let's see briefly the three cases of countries that focus mainly on OER. So these are Slovenia, Croatia, and Bulgaria, where a lot of funds, mainly basically majority, 70 five to eighty five percent were used from EU funds and they developed the digital skills but they don't not correlate with efforts and high expenses. Let's see Slovenia, the figures and the budget are um, like amazing, you will see. The investments uh, ten years ago the main investment in OER was like more than ten million. Uh, publishing industry did not cooperate in it because it was Creative Commons license and that actually altogether is totaled with 30 million people, uh, euros for less than 10% uh, actual use. So like it was said by Alina <laughs> during the COVID times, uh, countries that I have on this page actually all realize that we are not as digital as we thought we are. And then mainly um, off the record, people, uh, officials, politicians admit that actually um, uh, it is not distance learning that we talk about, but self-learning. And you can only imagine the parents, how frustrated they are, and this is already in the public opinion in many of the countries. So Croatia, astonishing figure, and there is uh, two projects, the school and school of life. So altogether, 270 million, mostly in hardware. You can imagine the tenders and everything that happens there, um, you know, um, just as an example, in the last two years, uh, 200,000 tablets were bought and distributed without really clear system to schools. So we can definitely say the low use of OVRs that were developed still for 6 million euros, but the hardware is actually not the part with the digital skills and teachers in the teaching process. So that's why we say in the COVID times, we have self-learning at home and not distance learning. So Bulgaria, um, this is the plan for 1922. And the absurdity in one actually particular case is that the, the money is planned to be given even to teachers to create their own learning objects, like 80 euros for learning objects. And here publishes with a, a, a astonished, but also actually uh, mainly concerned about copyright, so how and where this content actually will be taken to create these learning objects. And the last, of course, uh, to conclude is how to foster digital skills based on these uh, lessons learned. Um, we think that cooperation between ministries and content providers is crucial for development of efficient digital ecosystems with rapidly growing digital skills. So the role of the government, of the ministries, and especially the funds that are actually funding this kind of actions and initiative is to secure high-speed internet, of course, which is lacking, especially in some parts of my territory, of my region, and the hardware, of course, as well. But initial teacher training needs to be given and then supported by the industry who is actually so, uh, um, uh, um, offering concrete solutions for different types of didactical and methodological approach. And then, of course, financing the access to digital learning materials, like at the moment we all know are paying for the platforms. The governments are actually uh, doing that uh, for years. And of course, the last, the question mark for open education resources, I don't know even a one single case where this would work in more than 15, 20%. So it is like five to 10 times overpaid if the governments are actually doing this with the reason like accessible for everybody. So the growth of digital skills, how we see it, can only be effective with a close partnership where we have a partnership between the industry, the educational publishers, and the, and the, the, the officials and the, and the ministries and the governments. So we definitely strongly call on 
these uh, findings to be included in the further distribution of the of the of the funds for this in this direction and to be included in the digital action plan for the next European digital content framework. And I am actually open for the further discussion later on. That's it from my side. Thank you very much. Thank you.